Hello everyone and welcome to this master class on psychology of attention and retention. Today I will take you deep into the science behind these two topics. For our simplicity, we will take these two problems one after the other. So speaking about attention, John Medina, the author of bestseller Brain Rules said that if keeping someone's attention in a lecture was a business, it would have an 80% failure rate. And I completely agree with him. Simple truth is that all of us crave for attention as humans. You wouldn't believe how many times I have thrown a temper tantrum to get my parents attention as a kid or the number of times I did something foolish to get attention of my beloved crush. So it's obvious while on a public platform, I would want all eyes on me. But unfortunately, due to social constraints, I just can't throw another temp tant temper tantrum here. So let us try and understand the actual science behind attention before trying to capture it. According to a study by Times Group, attention span of a human is just 8 seconds, which is lesser than that of even a goldfish. But just like all things that go viral on internet aren't necessarily true, this study was also flawed and had poor scientific basis. There are multiple other studies which have been propagated since the 1970s saying that we can maintain meaningful attention for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. As this graph shows that our mind wanders uh, with time in a lecture and the memory of the lecture material also th is also thought to decline in the latter half of the lecture. However, multiple other studies have given conflicting results and two recent reviews actually debunked the theory of 10 minute attention span with most previous studies having varied results, poor methodologies and significant differences in ways of measuring attention. We all remember that how during our exams we sat for hours together keeping ourselves focused and having high productivity even with long periods of study. Just imagine if your attention span was 10 minutes or worse only 8 seconds every exam would have caused a panic attack. So, what drives our attention to last longer? While there are many factors, two of these are most important. First, it's the effort and second is the arousal. Our brain has the capacity to increase its performance depending on the difficulty of the task. So, we work at low capacity for simple tasks while we become more and more focused and put in more effort as the task becomes uh, tougher to a certain extent. I know I had to be much more focused when I was studying maths, a subject that still gives me nightmares as compared to the minimal effort I needed to understand biology. Unknowingly, my brain adjusted to both in terms of my effort. Another interesting concept was given by Yerkes and Dodson who showed that we need to maintain appropriate level of arousal to maintain a high performance level. Arousal simply means being physiologically alert, motivated and attentive. Now for a task that's routine or easy, we need high level of arousal to uh, maintain high level of performance. But much lower arousal is needed for a difficult task because our brain automatically becomes more focused. So in the original experiment conducted by Yerkes and Dodson, when mice were made to reach cheese through a maze, intermittent small electric shocks kept their arousal appropriately high and being focused they reached the target faster. But when high energy electric shocks were given to them, uh, their performance dropped significantly and they became confused. So finding the right amount of arousal during your presentations is important. In other words, you should simplify a complicated concept for your audience and you should try to turn a concept which is too simple into something very interesting to have appropriate levels of arousal. So what can you do to maintain attention? You need to do something emotionally relevant every few minutes to maintain a grip on your audience. Tell a story or intersperse your presentation with questions for the audience. Ask your audience to do a relevant task during the presentation or use a relevant video which is appropriately placed in your presentation. 
the more you involve the audience the more attentive they will be and if nothing works maybe a little electric shock hidden in the chairs to wake them up wouldn't be so bad would it so before we move on to understanding the science of retention let us review what we learned about attention we need to keep the arousal of the audience at an appropriate level depending on the complexity of the topic attention lasts for only 10 minutes is a myth that needs to be debunked so to maintain the audience's attention during a presentation right balance of complexity and interest is needed at different times always remember that simplify a concept that is too complicated and present a basic concept in an interesting way and lastly doing something emotionally relevant every few minutes would involve your audience and prevent them from snoozing and if nothing else you can always throw a temper tantrum on stage now after le learning about attention let's bring our focus to the second concept about psychology of retention just for a moment try and go back to the last time you attended an amazing live lecture in the last 3 months are you there yet now i'm sure you remember who gave that presentation but if i ask you do you remember any significant content from that talk i'm sure most of you if not all would not be able to recall even 10% of the actual content of that amazing lecture that you heard but why is that don't you find it odd psychology of retention and how it works has also been extensively studied with varying methodologies and results but to reach a crux or to simplify this complex issue let me bring you to the learning pyramid now you see in the learning pyramid the apex of the pyramid has passive formats of learning with poor retention using these methods while as we go down and with significant increase in active involvement of the audience or participants there is marked improvement in the retention ability so what is the mistakes what is the mistake that we make routinely number 1 we give too much information without enough time to connect its dots secondly unless the facts or information that we are providing has a deeper meaning that's understood by our audience it will not be retained and thirdly we often forget that an emotional connect will always enhance the learning experience of our audience and why do i say all this because our brain is wired to notice patterns that have a common theme so we need to structure our presentations around a key central idea supported by a web of details around it now if i ask you to try and remember these random letters that have been displayed in front of you you will find it very hard to do so but if i showed you the same letters have a pattern to them it makes it very easy for you to remember this information as a pattern of different abbreviations like irs ibm kgb etc this is how complex informations becomes easier for our brain to understand if we recognize the patterns to further know how our memory works let us understand two other concepts firstly the widely accepted atkinson and shiffrin model tells us that most of the day to day information is stored as short term or sensory memory which is soon forgotten in a very short period of time but if this short term memory is reinforced by repeated rehearsal or repetition before its decay then it is converted to our infinite long term memory in short if you as an audience come prepared for a lecture get involved actively during the lecture and reinforce the learnings of the lecture soon after it only then you will retain all that information the second concept is that of deep learning so our brain processes the information either superficially or in a deeper manner while when the input is just visual or auditory without understanding the underlying meaning behind it then recall of that information will always be poor in other words when you present to an audience images and verbalized information alone is ineffective you need to aim at making the audience understand the underlying concept with deeper clarity to what it means so in the movie inception which is one of my favorite movies cobb or leonardo dicaprio 
wants Fisher to split his father's company and to do the to do that, he incepts the idea in the third level of dreaming that is deep inside the brain, simplifying it to his father saying to Fisher, son, I want you to be your own man. This simple idea implanted deep in Fisher's brain erupts in his mind, making him split his father's company. So by your presentation, you should implant a simple idea deep enough in your audience's brain and you will see the remarkable results later. So if we again review how psychology of retention works, I think it is time for us to revolution, take revolutionary steps within our organization from the apex of this pyramid towards the base by engaging in newer formats of learning powered with energetic discussions and active participation of our audience. Remember that deep learning is always retained better and to achieve that, more than delivering information, you should give an understanding of the underlying concept to your audience. Lastly, just like the solar system where all planets revolve around the sun, your presentation should have one key central idea acting like the sun with all the other details revolving around it. You should try not to get lost in the vast empty space all around. Before I end, I will leave you with this final thought that your presentation should not aim to merely pass on information, but it should aim to inspire your audience. Thank you.